Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We have been studying the eigen properties of particularly Hermitian matrices. Recall that we say A is Hermitian if A star t equal to A. That is the a matrix is self conjugate Her A star is called the Hermitian conjugate of A and if A is its own conjugate then we call it a Hermitian uh, matrix. So, A belonging to C n cross n is an n by n complex matrix is called Hermitian if it is its own conjugate and we were looking at some very specific uh, Eigen properties of such a matrix. We had the following important properties of such a matrix. A is Hermitian then we have 1 all eigenvalues of A are real. This is a very important property of Hermitian matrices all the eigenvalues of A must be real. The second important property is that the eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues where are bound to be orthogonal corresponding to distinct eigenvalues or orthogonal. So, these are two important properties the first one says about the structure of the eigenvalues says that they are all real they will all be even if the even though the matrix may be complex as long as the matrix is Hermitian the eigenvalues are bound to be real. So, that is the first property which is the structure of the eigenvalues. Secondly the second property is about eigenvectors the eigenvectors are always orthogonally oriented if you take two different eigenvalues then take the eigenvectors corresponding to each one of them they are bound to be oriented orthogonal to each other. These are two important properties of Hermitian matrices. We also found that without proving we said that for every eigenvalue of A the algebraic multiplicity is equal to the geometric multiplicity and therefore, A is diagonalized. Using these properties we showed that we can construct a unitary matrix that is we want to eventually assert that A is not only diagonalizable, but U A is unitarily <coughs> diagonalizable. So, we can construct a unitary matrix U such that U star A U is a diagonal matrix. And we observed that U is constructed using orthonormal eigenvectors of A and D is constructed using the eigenvalues using the eigenvalues of A. These were the two important constructions the orthonormal eigenvectors give rise to the unitary matrix U and the eigenvalues give rise to the diagonal matrix D. If we now since U is unitary U star is U inverse 
and u star inverse is u. So, this u star a equal to d gives us the decomposition hence we have the decomposition of a as a equal to e u d u star into three simple matrices the two extreme matrices are unitary and therefore easily invertible and the middle one is diagonal and therefore easily handleable. So, into a product of three simple matrices. We shall now look at some simple examples of these calculations. Consider the matrix A equal to 3 minus 1 1 minus 1 5 minus 1 1 minus 1 3. Notice that we this is a real symmetric matrix and as we observed yesterday in the last lecture the real symmetric matrix case we get everything in place of unitary we get orthogonal matrices that is u star is just u is real and u star becomes u transpose. So, now let us look at this matrix. So, A is real symmetric matrix, A is a real symmetric matrix. Then let us find the character the characteristic polynomial of this can be shown to be lambda minus 6 into lambda minus 3 into lambda minus t. We have to just write the determinant of lambda i minus a and expand it then we will find it can be factored as lambda minus 6 into lambda minus 3 into lambda minus 2. Therefore, there are 3 distinct eigenvalues. They are lambda 1 equal to 6, lambda 2 equal to 3, and lambda 3 equal to 2 and obviously, there are algebraic multiplicities are all 1. So, we have a real symmetric matrix now whose eigenvalues are known we know their algebraic multiplicities. Let us find the eigenvectors. So, the first the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 1 equal to 6. For this we must look at the matrix A minus 6 i because lambda 1 is 6 A minus 6 i is this matrix minus 3 minus 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. This matrix is obtained by taking the matrix A and subtracting 6 from the diagonal. So, if you subtract 6 from the diagonal you get this and all the other items remain unchanged. Now, to find the eigenspace w 1 we must find the null space of a minus 6 i that is we must find that is to find the solutions of solution space of the system a minus 6 i into x 1 x 2 x 3 equal to 0 0 0. We have to solve this system when we solve this system we find we, we can show we can easily see when we solve this that the set of all solutions we get is of the form all alpha minus 2 alpha and alpha where alpha is any real number. And therefore, we see that 1 minus 2 1 is a basis for w 1. Recall the way we construct the matrix u 
and the way we treat it Eigen vectors for a Hermitian or a real symmetric matrix is always the orthonormal Eigen vectors. So, this is an Eigen vector any non zero vector in W 1 is an Eigen vector u 1 is an Eigen vector, but it is not normalized to 1. So, we normalize it that is the Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value 1 and there is only one Eigen vector because algebraic multiplicity. So, we divide by its length which is square root of 6 and we get the Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value lambda 1 equal to 6. Similarly, we have the Eigen value lambda 2 equal to 3. So, we look at W 2 the Eigen space which is a null space of a minus 3 i. Now, if we write a minus 3 i, a minus 3 i is obtained from subtracting 3 along the diagonal of a. When we do that, we get this matrix and then we have to find the solution of solution space of a minus 3 i into x 1, x 2, x 3 equal to 0, 0, 0 and a minus 3 i matrix is given here and so when we solve this system we get the solution as w w 2 equal to the set of all vectors of the form beta 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 where beta belongs to r. So, now again we easily see that u 2 equal to 1 1 1 is a basis for w 2 is the basis for w 2 and this is not orthogonal and uh, is not normalized. So, we construct the orthonormal vector corresponding to the Eigen vector 2 and there is only one of them because the algebraic multiplicity 1 if we divide by the length you get 1 1 1. So, that is the orthonormalized Eigen vector corresponding to lambda 2. Now, observe that any vector in w 1 is of the form alpha minus 2 alpha alpha and any vector in w 2 is of the form beta 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 and if you take the dot product you find that alpha beta minus 2 alpha beta alpha beta they get cancel and that therefore, they are orthogonal. So, note that any vector in W 1 is orthogonal to any vector in W 2. And this is what we had that when you have a real symmetric matrix or a complex Hermitian matrix the Eigen vectors corresponding to distinct Eigen values will be ortho. Now, let us look at the corresponding Eigen space for W 3. So, we must look at null space of a minus 2 i because lambda 3 is 2. Now, a minus 2 i is the matrix obtained by subtracting 2 from the diagonals and we get this matrix. And therefore, to find the null space we must find the solution space of a minus 2 i x 1 x 2 x 3 equal to 0 0 0. Now, when we have the a minus 2 i here. So, when we solve this system we get the solution space w 3 to be the set of all vectors of the form gamma 0 minus gamma where gamma is and we see that 1 0 minus 1 is a basis for B w 3 and when you normalize it you get the Eigen vector corresponding to the third Eigen value and there is only 1 1 by root 2 into 1 0 minus 1. So, therefore, if we summarize we have the Eigen value on the one side Eigen vectors normalized on the other side 
we have lambda 1 equal to 6 and the eigenvector was 1 by root 6 into 1 minus 2 1 this is what we called as phi 1 1 and similarly for lambda 2 equal to 3 we had the eigenvector 1 by root 3 into 1 1 1 and lambda 3 equal to 2 we get phi 3 2 equal to 1 by root 2 1 0 minus 1. Now, observe that all these vectors are length 1 and they are orthogonal to each other. Also observe that every vector in w 3 is orthogonal to every vector in w 1 and w 2 that is the statement that eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. So, for the three eigenvalues now we have got the three eigenvectors they are orthonormalized. Notice that the eigenvalues are all real because the matrix is real symmetric whenever you have a real symmetric matrix or a complex Hermitian matrix all the eigenvalues will be real. Now, we look at the construction of u the unitary matrix how do we construct we put this eigenvectors along the diagonal if you put the eigenvectors we have 1 by root 6 minus 2 by root 6 1 by root 6 that is the first eigenvector. Then the second eigenvector comes along the second column so it is 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 and the third eigenvector comes along the third column minus 1 by root. Now, since the columns are orthonormals since columns are orthonormal u is unitary and now it is easy to check that if we now take the matrix A and multiply u star a u we would get what is the same in this case it is the same as u transpose a u because u star is u transpose because we are dealing with real matrices and this will be the diagonal matrix and what will be the diagonal entries the eigenvalues corresponding to the columns eigenvectors the first column correspondent to the corresponds to this eigenvalue 6 the second column corresponds to the eigenvalue 3 and the third column corresponds to the eigenvalue 2. So, these three eigenvalues will come along the diagonal the rest of the entries will be 0 and we have this diagonalization process. Now, we can actually substitute u and therefore, u transpose and we know the matrix A we can actually carry out the multiplication and verify that it is indeed the diagonal matrix 6 0 0 0 3 0 0 0 2 and we get the decomposition of A as A equal to u d u star if you now or u d u transpose in because now u star is u uh, u star is u transpose. So, now what is u we have the u here we can substitute that and we have the diagonal matrix here we can substitute that and since we know u we know u transpose. So, that we see that now the decomposition of A are the product of three simple matrices. So, this is the demonstration of all the uh, results that we obtain for a uh, symmetric a real symmetric matrix or complex Hermitian matrix. Now, let us look at another example. without too many details the first uh, look at the matrix A 6 minus 2 2 minus 2 3 minus 1 2 minus 1 3. Again notice that A transpose is equal to A and A is real and therefore, A is a real symmetric matrix A is a real symmetric 
matrix. Once again, if you calculate the characteristic polynomial of lambda, which is the determinant of lambda i minus a, we have the a, we have the i, if we substitute, we get the determinant. When we expand the determinant, we get lambda minus 2 squared into lambda minus 8. Now, in this case, we have a multiple eigenvalue. So, the distinct eigenvalues the distinct eigenvalues are lambda 1 equal to 2 with the multiplicity algebraic multiplicity is 2 and the eigenvalue lambda 2 is 8 with algebraic multiplicity 1. Note is that all the eigenvalues are real note eigenvalues are all real. Now, let us find the eigenspaces w 1 is the null space of a minus 2 i because lambda 1 is 2. So, a minus lambda 1 i is a minus 2 i. So, a minus 2 i with this given matrix is just 4 minus 2 2 minus 2 1 minus 1 2 minus 1 1. We get this matrix by subtracting 2 from the diagonal. Now, we find solutions of find solution space of a minus 2 i the system a minus 2 i x 1 x 2 x 3 equal to 0 0. We have the matrix a minus 2 i we have a homogeneous system we know how to solve it and when we solve this we get w 1 the set of all solutions is of the form alpha beta minus 2 alpha plus beta where alpha and beta are real. So, this is the set of all solutions of this homogeneous system and we easily see therefore, u 1 equal to 1 0 minus 2 and u 2 equal to 0 1 1 is a basis for w 1 and therefore, dimension of w 1 is equal to 2 and therefore, g 1 the algebraic multiplicity is 2 and you therefore, see the algebraic multiplicity was 2 and this is also the geometric multiplicity. Thus, the geometric multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity are the same. The basis we have found for w 1 is not orthonormal. So, we apply Gram Schmidt to the or uh, the above basis apply Gram Schmidt to the above basis. Then we get an orthonormal basis we will uh, we'll leave it as an exercise uh, to find this orthonormal basis using Gram Schmidt we get the orthonormal basis. Now, these are eigenvectors orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalue 1, but there are 2 eigenvectors and they turn out to be 1 by root 6 0 minus 1 by root 5 because uh, 1 by root 5 minus 2 by root 5 and phi to 1 turns out to be 1 by root 30 into 2 phi 1. So, we get the two eigenvectors are corresponding to the eigenvalue uh, lambda 1 equal to 2 and there are two eigenvectors algebraic multiplicity is 2 geometric multiplicity is 2 we get two orthonormal eigenvectors. Let us next find w 2 which is the null space of a minus 2 i thus lambda 2 i lambda 2 is 8. So, a minus 8 i. Now, a minus 8 i is obtained from the given matrix a by subtracting 8 from the diagonal when we do that we get this matrix a Now, we have to find the 
solution space of this homogeneous system find solution space of the homogeneous system 8 minus i a minus 8 i x 1 x 2 x 3 equal to 0 0 0. Now, we have the matrix a minus 8 i we can apply the row operations or any other trick to solve the system we get w 2 to be the set of all vectors of the form beta minus beta by 2 beta by 2 where beta is any real and therefore, if we take beta equal to 2 we get u equal to 2 minus 1 1 a basis for w 2 and therefore, dimension of w 2 equal to 1 which is therefore, g 2 therefore, which implies g 2 equal to 1. So, again we find the algebraic multiplicity of the second eigenvalue is 1 the geometric multiplicity is also equal to 1. Now, this eigenvector is not normalized it is not length 1. So, by normalizing it and there will be only one eigenvalue vector corresponding to the eigenvalue 2 and that is given by 1 by root 6 into 2 minus 1 1 because the length is root 6. So, thus now notice that every vector in w 1 is orthogonal to every vector in w 2 we will leave it is easy to check from the structure of these two uh, spaces that every vector in w 1 is orthogonal to every vector in w 2. This is the corroboration of the statement that the Eigen vectors corresponding to distinct Eigen values must be orthonormal or orthogonal to each other. Now, the construction of u the unitary matrix u. Now, to get u we must put the Eigen vectors along the orthonormal Eigen vectors that we found we have 1 by root 5 0 minus 2 by root 5 then 1 by root uh, 2 by root 30 2 by root 30 5 by root 30 and 1 by root 30 and then we had 2 by root 6 minus 1 by root 6 1 by root 6. So, this is the matrix obtained by putting the 3 Eigen vectors along the 3 columns then u transpose is the u transpose u is equal to identity because u is unitary. Why is u unitary? Because columns are orthonormal. The moment the columns are orthonormal the matrix becomes unitary. So, that is the matrix u and then we get if we now put u transpose a u u star is u transpose in this case we can easily verify we can substitute for u we can substitute for u transpose the matrix u is given and verify that the product is going to give a diagonal which diagonal the first two columns correspond to the eigenvalue 2. So, the first two diagonal entries will be 2 and the third column corresponds to the eigenvalue 8 and therefore, the third diagonal entry will be 8 and therefore, this is the diagonalization of u and the decomposition of a is given by a equal to u this diagonal matrix into u transpose where u is as obtained here and therefore, we see that a has been decomposed into the product of 3 simple matrices product of 3 simple matrices the 2 extreme factors being unitary and the middle one being diagonal. So, we have seen therefore, the structure of 
real symmetric and complex Hermitian matrices through their eigenvalues. We observe that the eigenvalues are real, eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other when the eigenvalues are distinct and we can find eigenvectors basis for the whole space and corresponding to each eigenvalue if the algebraic multiplicity is a j there will be g exactly a j orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to them and when you put all these orthonormal eigenvectors along the columns of a matrix it becomes a unitary matrix and we get the diagonalization unitary diagonalization in the case of complex and orthogonal diagonalization in place of real and we get the decomposition of a given Hermitian matrix or a real symmetric matrix into a product of three simple matrices two of them being unitary and the middle one being the diag being a diagonal matrix and the unitary matrix U is constructed using the eigenvectors of see if when we construct this U it is constructed using the three eigenvectors of U and the diagonal matrix is constructed using the eigenvalues and each eigenvalue appears as many times as its algebraic multiplicity. So, the construction of this decomposition involves both the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Thus, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a Hermitian matrix play a very crucial role in looking at the structure of the matrix in a very simple form. We have seen the decomposition of a Hermitian matrix into a product of three simple matrices. Now, we shall look at the same in a different angle and look at the decomposition of the matrix not as a product of simple matrices, but as the sum of simple matrices. So, so decomposition of A as the sum of simple matrices, this is our goal. We will, we will say what is meant by simple matrices as we go along. This is connected with one of the questions that we raised at the beginning of the course. So, what we do is the following we start with the matrix A, H n is the collection of all Hermitian matrices, that is, A is Hermitian, A belongs to C and N, and A is Hermitian. Now, we start with a Hermitian matrix then we have its characteristic polynomial with the usual notations lambda 1 lambda k are the distinct eigenvalues and a 1 a 2 a k are the algebraic multiplicities of these eigenvalues. And then we have the w j to be the null space of a minus lambda j i which is the eigen space corresponding to lambda j i and then we have the orthonormal basis for w j which we denote by phi 1 phi j 1 phi j 2 phi j a h. This is the notation we had used in the last lecture corresponding to the j th eigenvalue. So, the superscript j says that we are talking about the eigenvalue j lambda j and the subscript says the ordering of the eigenvector. So, there are a j orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda j and then we said that we observed last time that if you put all these things together j equal to 1 to k this basis this individual orthonormal basis is an orthonormal basis for C n. So, how does this bay looks like it starts with phi 1 1 then goes on up to phi 1 a 1 then it goes to phi 2 1 then phi 2 a 2. So, it lists first the a 1 eigenvectors orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 1 
then the a 2 eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 2 and in the end it lists the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda k and there are a k of them. So, this is all that basis looks like. So, now we have an orthonormal basis. Now, any vector can be expanded in terms of the orthonormal basis. So, let x be in C n we can expand x in terms of this orthonormal basis as now you see first we will write all the terms corresponding to the first a 1 base vectors then a 2 base vectors. So, in our note we can use this notation x is equal to first expand with respect to the jth basis vectors and do this for every one of the j's. So, we can write the expansion of x in terms of this orthonormal basis in this form x phi r j the orthogonal projection of x along the direction times the projection. This is the Fourier expansion which we have seen before for any orthonormal basis we can expand a vector in terms of that orthonormal basis. Now, this implies if we now look at a x I have to multiply by a it is a sum. So, I can distribute the multiplication to each one of these terms this is a constant this is a number the inner product is a number. So, I have to look at a phi or j, but I know the moment at this superscript is there that means, this is an Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value lambda j. So, that becomes summation the two summations and this coefficient and then this is the Eigen vector corresponding to Eigen value lambda j. So, it can be written as lambda j phi j r. If you recollect we can write the inner product of two vectors x comma y as y star x. So, this is the same as phi r j star x the inner product is written in terms of the matrix dot product, but now it is a conjugate. So, phi r j star x and then a lambda j and then phi r j we can rewrite this as summation j equal to 1 to k summation r equal to 1 to a j lambda j phi j r phi r j star x. This is a number the phi r j star x is a number. So, this is a complete product and we, we can re rewrite as lambda j phi r j phi r j star this whole thing multiplying x because matrix multiplication is distributed. So, we will write this now as j equal to 1 to k r equal to 1 to a j lambda j we will write this as a r j x where a r j is just pi j r phi j r star. So, this is what a x is. Now, what is this a r j? If you look at phi r j it is an Eigen vector it belongs to C n. So, that is an n by 1 vector therefore, this is obtained by transposing and conjugating. So, that is a 1 by n vector. So, the product is going to be an n by n matrix. So, a r j is an n by n matrix in short notation we will write it as phi r j this is what we in the beginning of the course we called as the outer product or the tensor product. A r j is phi r j tensor phi r j 
uh, in fact there is no more star there the moment I put tensor the star is taken care of. It is the tensor of phi rj with itself. So, phi rj tensor phi rj means phi rj phi rj star that's, that is the matrix phi rj phi rj star. So, this phi rj phi rj star is written in this form. So, therefore, a r j is a matrix. Now, a r j is a matrix lambda j is a number. So, the number times matrix is a matrix we are adding a number of n by n matrix that is going to be another n by n matrix. So, we let k to be all that sum j equal to 1 to k r equal to 1 to a j lambda j phi a r j. Now, this is an n by n matrix what we have is a x this a x is equal to k x and this is true for every x a x is equal to k x for every x in C. Now, if there are two matrices a and k such that a x equal to k x for every x in C n then a must be equal to k this implies a equal to k. So, therefore, we have a equal to summation r uh, summation j equal to 1 to k r equal to 1 to a j lambda j so this lambda j a r j where a r j again I repeat is phi r j tensor phi r j which is the same as phi r j phi r j star. So, now we see already we have some decomposition we have decomposed the matrix A as the sum of a number of matrices lambda j a r j a r j is a matrix. So, we are looking at lambda j a r j. So, thus we have a decomposition. Let us analyze this decomposition little bit carefully by looking at each term. Okay. So, look at a r j. So, let us make that uh, remark first. So, we have let us call this as 1 in 1 we see a decomposition of A as the sum of matrices which are of the form lambda u cross v u cross u where by taking suitable eigenvalues each each is of the form okay sum of matrices each of which is of the form lambda u cross u by suitable values of lambda and u and u. So, let us analyze each one of these. So, let us analyze how simple each one of these terms. So, typically let u belong to C n and u not equal to theta n and let say T be a matrix which is u tensor u. What does that mean? It is equal to u u star. Now, for any x in R n we have and let us without loss of generality even take length of u to be 1 because all our uh, in our construction 
all the matrices all the vectors involved are of length 1. So, we can as well look at these things with the length 1. So, for any x in R n we have T x is equal to u u star x. Now, matrix multiplication is associative. So, it is u star x. Now, u star x is a number. So, it is of the form some alpha x times u where alpha x is u star x which belongs to C. And therefore, we find that every vector any vector in the range of T is of the form T x and therefore, every vector is in the range of the is a multiple of u. Hence, since every vector in the range of u range of t is of the form t x we see that every vector in the range of t is a scalar multiple of u and t of u is u star u into u which is equal to u because u is unitary u star u is the length u squared which is 1 and therefore, u belongs to range of t. Therefore, u is a vector in the range of t and every other vector in the range of t is a multiple of u and hence u spans the range of t and u not equal to theta n therefore, u is a basis for range of t and therefore, rank of t which is equal to the dimension of range of t. Now, since there is only one vector in the basis for the range of t the dimension is 1. Therefore, any matrix of the form t equal to u tensor u u not equal to theta n norm u equal to 1 is of rank 1. Now, since all our matrices A R S A R J are of this form they are all of the form phi r u tensor u u is phi r j and they are all of length 1 then therefore, by the structure of A R j we get that hence each A R j is of rank 1. And therefore, we have seen that we are able to express the matrix A if you look at this representation these are all of rank 1. So, this is only a linear combination of rank 1 matrices. So, we have expressed the first thing we observe is the following. So, thus the representation A equal to summation J equal to 1 to K summation R equal to 1 to A J lambda j phi j r tensor phi j r gives us a decomposition of A as the sum as the linear combination of rank 1 matrices. This is the first observation that we have about the decomposition of a matrix at the sum of matrices. Now, they are sum of simple matrices because now they are all uh, linear combinations of rank 1 matrices. Now, let us analyze this a little more. What we observe is that when we have an eigenvalue 0 
the terms corresponding to that eigenvalue will all disappear because we will be multiplying by that eigenvalue lambda j. For example, we are having this multiplier lambda j. So, whenever we have the terms corresponding to an eigenvalue 0, these terms will completely disappear from this summation. So, let us let us make that point. So, since okay, suppose let us put it this suppose So, let us say for uh, for convenience the last eigenvalue is equal to 0. So, so, that is one of the eigenvalues is 0 and we set it as lambda k. So, one of the eigenvalues is 0 say what does that mean this means all the terms corresponding to this eigenvalue in the above decomposition disappear because we will be multiplying by that particular eigenvalue we are going to multiply lambda j times in this decomposition you will see that there is a multiplier lambda j. So, if there the eigenvalue uh, corresponding to k is lambda k term we take then all those terms will disappear. Now, how many terms are there what is the effect of the disappearance all this if you look at then we get a decent decomposition of k how many such terms are there. The number of terms corresponding to lambda k equal to 0 will be a k. What is a k? That is equal to the algebraic multiplicity of lambda k equal to 0, the eigenvalue lambda k, which means this is the same as the geometric multiplicity of lambda k equal to 0, which is the dimension of null space of a minus lambda k, but lambda k is 0 as the dimension of null space of a which is just the nullity of a. So, in other words nu a terms will totally disappear from the representation of a. So, we have the decomposition of a as the sum as a linear combination of matrices linear combination of rank 1 matrices a priori we had n terms and because of the multiplier factor of the eigenvalue whenever we have an eigenvalue 0 nu a the nullity times that many terms will disappear from the eigenvalue. Hence the above sum becomes a decomposition of A into the sum of now totally we had n terms we had A 1 terms corresponding to lambda 1 A 2 terms corresponding to lambda 2 etcetera out of which now nu A disappeared n minus nu A terms will be there, but n minus nu A is the rank of the matrix of row 1 rank matrices each now, each one is one rank because it uh, is a one rank multiplied by a constant non zero constant. Now, the remaining eigenvalues are non zero, so all other terms are of rank 1 matrices. So, thus we see that the matrix which has row, rank row has been expressed as the sum of row 1 rank matrices. Thus, the matrix A which has rank row has been expressed as the sum of 
rho 1 rank matrices. giving us a decomposition of remember we are dealing with a Hermitian matrix decomposition of a Hermitian matrix as the sum of simple matrices. And when we say simple, when we say simple, we mean rank one matrices. Now, we see therefore, in the case of Hermitian matrices, we have very nice decompositions we have a product decomposition, we can decompose the matrix as the product of 3 simple matrices, 2 of them being unitary and the middle one being diagonal. We can diagonalize the matrix A, we have all eigenvalues real and we can also express the matrix as the sum of simple matrices namely sum of rank 1 matrices and if the rank of the matrix is rho we get exactly A as the sum of row 1 rank matrices and these 1 rank matrices are easily constructed as the tensor product of an eigenvector with itself and these are the eigenvectors corresponding to the non-zero eigenvalue of the matrix. So, in the case of Hermitian matrices we have very nice structure, we have very nice decompositions which would automatically help in the analysis of the matrix as well as the systems of equations connected with such Hermitian matrices. But all this we have seen only for Hermitian matrices. What does one do when the matrix is not Hermitian or if you have a real matrix which is not real symmetric what do we do in such cases or if you do not even have a rect uh, square matrix and you are dealing with a rectangular matrix what do we do in such cases. So, what we shall see is we can reduce all these problems to the analysis of some suitable Hermitian or real symmetric matrix and therefore, we will re uh, refer to all the results we have and through this we can conclude about the decompositions as product, decompositions as sums and so on of any general matrix. To this end we shall start looking at a very special class of Hermitian matrices which we shall be using in our analysis of a general matrix. Thank you.